Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and a couple of announcements. First of all, um, our conference is just a few weeks away, November 8th through 10, here in Columbus, Ohio. And we have some amazing speakers coming to join us. You can go to our website at wellnessforumhealth.com and read the roster of speakers. And uh, we've added a vaccine panel to the Sunday afternoon part of our program because we think it's a very important issue to talk about. Um, one thing that's unusual about our conference, it's an inexpensive conference. We subsidize it a lot because we think it's important information for you to learn. The second thing is everybody who comes gets a $500 certificate toward a package of courses. So you actually get back more money than you spend in coming to the conference. Um, and so uh, take a look, take a look at the roster, come and join us. The food's great, get a chance to see our corporate office and meet everybody who works here. And we would just love to spend the weekend with you. So I hope you'll give it some serious thought. For those of you who just can't come, because we have a big audience of people from all over the world, many, many different countries. And I'm assuming that some of you will not be able to come here from South Africa and Australia and Israel and that sort of thing. So we are filming the conference, um, just the main session videos. We can't really do the breakout sessions, but enough that you'll get to participate if you wanna buy the video version. And you can also check that out online at wellnessforumhealth.com. Um, new courses for 2020, which are available for packages, um, a science-based approach to vaccinations. Um, we're going to approach this a little bit differently. Religious exemptions are going away. You're going to have to learn how to have science-based conversations with your elected officials, teachers, principals, friends of your parents, of your kids, friends, and etc. So this course is designed to educate you in that way and to provide you with materials to give to people. Uh, cardiovascular disease, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, cancer 201, which is an evaluation of some of the most common alternative treatments that are helpful for cancer, kidney disease, Parkinson's disease, ALS, food allergies, and female contraceptive options. So those are the new uh, courses for 2020. And um, of course, that people who register early get really special, special prices on these. So um, if you have some interest in discussing this, Pam Popper at msn.com. Uh, many of you are emailing me about careers, want to keep those emails coming. We need lots of people doing the kind of work that we do here at Wellness Born Health. Uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We're right in the middle of the campaign as of today. It's the 15th. And so we're in the middle of the campaign and um, we give everybody who signs the pledge to make four commitments, which are to eat, eat a plant-based diet, uh, achieve a better weight, uh, limit alcohol and exercise more. Um, you get a hundred dollars certificate toward courses, a free online lecture on how to reduce your risk of breast cancer. And if you promote this idea to other people, if you get a hundred women to sign the pledge, then you get an extra hundred dollars certificate. So we're giving away a lot of money here at Wellness Farm Health these days. So don't miss out on that. If you're interested in the breast cancer program, Pam Popper at msn.com, send me an email, we'll get you all set up. Uh, a couple things um, that I wanted to mention. Many of you have sent emails about Schroeder. Few, few of you sent cards. Thank you so much. Schroeder's my kitty who's um, a little over 15 years old now and has stage three kidney disease. And thanks to one of our viewers uh, who turned me on to this product called Astro's Oil. I ordered it and of course he's getting fluids and we're doing acupuncture, all kinds of things that we know are good for kitties who have kidney disease. But since we started doing Astro, Astro's Oil and adding that to his food, remarkable turnaround. He's the healthiest looking sick cat, if you want to say that, that I've ever seen. And he's actually gotten well enough to have his dental work done, which requires anesthesia. Makes me really nervous, but we have to do it because he's, uh, looks like he's going to stick around for a good long time, which I'm really happy about that. So we got to get those teeth cleaned. And I think he has one that has to be extracted. So I really appreciate the emails and the concern and the uh, suggestions and ideas. And, you know, it just warms my heart and it warms Schroeder's heart too. I tell him all about you guys and how much you care about him. So anyway, let's get on to some great topics to talk about. And the first one is, I'm really excited about this, mainly because I'm always excited when um, I'm considered the radical person, but as it turns out, my ideas are right about things. So according to new guidelines developed by an expert panel, screening for colorectal cancer should not be routinely recommended for all adults age 50 to 79. Instead, only those people identified as being at higher risk should be screened. And this is a huge about face right now, since most countries 
degrees recommend routine screening for all adults starting at the age of 50 and some have lowered the age for first screening to 45. The new guidelines are based on a systematic review of screening trials, which included three randomized trials that uh, looked at one-time sigmoidoscopy. The recommendations apply to people who have not been previously screened, have no symptoms of colorectal cancer, and have a life expectancy of at least 15 years. Individuals who have less than 3% risk do not need to screen at all. Those who are at risk, and I'll get to what that entails in a minute, can choose between fecal immunochemical test or FIT every year or every two years, one-time sigmoidoscopy or one-time colonoscopy. The researchers reported that there was, quote, substantial uncertainty regarding the benefits and harms of screening, and that all four screening options resulted in similar reductions in mortality from colorectal cancer. In other words, there is no advantage of, of uh, screening with colonoscopy. Both the authors of this study and the authors of an editorial published in the same issue of the journal um, uh, agree that recommendations to screen for colorectal cancer are based on what they termed weak evidence. Lead author Lisa Helsington told Medscape, we cannot give strong recommendation for screening. Now, I went to the online risk calculator that um, uh, was discussed in the Medscape article and I found out I don't qualify for screening. I wasn't surprised at that since my risk of developing colorectal cancer in the next 15 years is only 2.45%. Now I found the risk calculator really interesting because it included questions about my age and sex and alcohol use, history of cancer, family history of cancer, height and weight, but there were no questions about my diet. In other words, I could be a skinny meat eater who was on the way to developing cancer, but if I haven't had cancer yet and it doesn't run in my family, which it doesn't, I'd get a pass on screening. Now, to be clear, there's no evidence that meat eaters benefit from colorectal screening with colonoscopy. I mean, that's, that's the general population and that's one of the reasons why the recommendations are being changed. But it seems that right now, while acknowledging that colon rectal screening is ineffective and doesn't lower your risk of dying of colon cancer, it would be a really good time to talk about strategies that do work to prevent colon cancer and death from colon cancer, like dietary change. So I think it's a tremendous missed opportunity. And I also think that the risk calculator should take into consideration diet. But having said that, I, anything that keeps people from having this useless test is a, is a good idea in my mind. The issue right now is going to be translating this information into practice. It has been known for a really long time that colonoscopy does not reduce the risk of dying from colon cancer. I have made videos about this for a long time and there are probably four or five articles posted in the Health Braves Library about this issue. In 2016, the Canadians took colonoscopy off of the routine screening test list for, that everybody's supposed to do. And they said at the time that they did it, the health authorities in Canada, that the reason that they did it was that there's not a single randomized trial that has ever shown that having a colonoscopy reduces your risk of dying of colon cancer. So they just couldn't justify it anymore. So this is not new information. But um, anyway, uh, in spite of that, we, we're finally catching up here. Um, organizations are digging in their heels and indicating resistance to change. And I was sort of flabbergasted. Don Provenzal, who's co-chair of the National Comprehensive Cancer Network, told Medscape in an interview, quote, at this time, NCCN continues to endorse screening for colorectal cancer in average risk individuals aged 50 to 75. She added that NCCN would monitor the new risk-based personalized approach, but so far um, does not plan to change its stance. And I, I think that's what's really um, a continuing theme in the articles and books that I write and the classes I teach and the work that I do to help consumers to do better for themselves is that, um, you know, screening with colonoscopy has never been a good idea for everybody who, for, you help one person, you hurt or kill another. I mean, that's a wash in, in anybody's, um, in anybody's um, uh, mathematical calculations, but doctors continue to promote colonoscopy organizations have already said in response to this study, they're going to continue to promote colonoscopy. So the consumer has to be educated because it's the only way for you to avoid useless and harmful care is for you to be informed so that you can learn to just say no. I remember, I think it was Time Magazine or Newsweek several years ago had a cover story 
and it showed a group of people running away or backing away from a physician and, and the, um, uh, the headline was the most powerful word that, can, that might save your life and when you opened up the article it was no. So the consumer has to, has to know so they can refuse to accept tests and treatments and drugs and procedures and this sort of thing that are harmful or useless. So I guess it's welcome to 21st century, uh, 21st century medicine, which is best avoided if necessary. So, you know, I'm all for hanging out with doctors when something is really, really wrong with you and needs attention. But um, this idea of showing up and poking and prodding as we do with screening programs, um, with the exception of pap testing, it's a terrible idea. So anyway, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. If you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button so we get notifications when uh, I post new videos, which is every week. And uh, I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.